What's up you guys, my name is Brobson, and today I'm excited to bring you my first build video from one of my favorite builds in the Elder Scrolls Online. It's a double bow wielding, stamina based warden, and I've decided to name the build Brobin Hood. This guide will go over absolutely everything there is to know about the Brobin Hood build so that you can emulate this build yourself, or tweak it to fit your personal playstyle. If you're only looking for specific pieces of information about this build, then feel free to check the table of contents in the description to get a timestamp to the information that you'd like to see. One of the reasons I love this build so much is because it takes on the true archer and bow and arrow role. Most stamina classes will use a bow on the back bar, but then require use of melee weapons on the front bar. Throughout most of ESO's history, there was unfortunately just no way to make a true archer class like so many of us love to do in Skyrim with the stealth archer build. Luckily, with some of the changes in the Somerset expansion and Wolf Hunter DLC, this changed, and for the first time you can be a full-on archer wielding bows on both bars, dealing damage from afar or up close, and actually pulling really relevant DPS numbers. Strong DPS is actually one of the main pros of this build. I'm not even max CP yet, and I've managed to pull over 45,000 single target damage on a 6 million health dummy with just my self buffs, so it actually has the potential to hit really hard if you get the rotation down right. Another great thing about this build is that it's extremely versatile. Though it's built to be a true ranged DPS class, with just a few skill and gear swaps it can fulfill a melee role as well, which means you'll be valuable to your guild no matter what trial role is needed. There are a lot of different options for gear, so if you're struggling to get the main sets that I show, you can farm some of the alternative options without experiencing too big of a DPS drop off. Another great thing about this build is that it's got a really simple rotation, so you should be able to pull pretty good numbers really quickly. The final major pro of this build is that it's got amazing sustain. It's one of the only stamina based builds that I've created that has no issue sustaining on a dummy, and it's even easier to sustain in a trial setting when you're constantly getting synergies for regen from your teammates. The main downside to this build is that it doesn't have great AoE damage. You do have a few AoE ground dots, but the radius for them is small, and the bread and butter of this build is definitely single target damage, so you won't be as useful in fights that require large area cleave damage. It's also, like most stamina builds, a little bit squishy. This lack of survivability is largely mitigated by the fact that you can fight from a distance, which keeps you safe from most mechanics, but if you do end up in a fight that requires you to be in the face of the enemy, you'll either need to sacrifice some of your DPS to slot extra self heals, or just really trust your healers to keep you alive. The final major con of this build is that it's an off-meta build. Personally, I'd consider this a pro because I love unique builds that I don't see everyone and their mom playing, but if you're one of the players who wants to absolutely min-max your damage output and be as strong as possible, you would be better off using a traditional dual wield and bow build instead. Now that we've gotten all the boring introductory stuff out of the way, let's get into the actual build, shall we? So we'll start out here on the character page and we'll just look at our stats real quick. First and foremost, in terms of race, I would strongly recommend being a wood elf. Wood Elf passives will give you a little bit more maximum stamina, but more importantly, it will give you a huge stamina recovery bonus, which will help a lot with your sustain on this build. In terms of other races you could play, I would say probably Red Guard is your second best option, but honestly, Wood Elf is the way to go if you want to run the Double Bow Warden build. For attribute points, you want to put all 64 directly into stamina. If you're really struggling with your health, you can go ahead and chuck a health glyph into your armor, but I wouldn't recommend putting any attribute points into health or magicka. Just put all 64 straight into stamina. Looking at our max stats, we're at just over 10k max magicka, 16.3k health, which is actually quite nice for a stamina build, and just over 33 max stamina. Our stamina pool is actually on the lower end, but as you can see, once we self buff here and we go ahead and drink a potion, we are looking at 1895, nearly 1900 stam recovery. This is huge and it will more than offset the slightly lower max stam pool. With 1900 stam recovery, you will not struggle at all with sustain, especially when you're picking up synergies and orbs from your healers and tanks. You will have no issue whatsoever with sustaining your stamina. We're looking at 2,451 weapon damage and 52% weapon crit. That critical will go up an additional approximately 10% if you go ahead and use the Thief Mundus Stone. Uh, we're looking at almost 12k spell resistance and 11.5k physical resistance, which is pretty standard. Um, I would recommend running the Lover Mundus Stone in most situations because it's going to give you extra physical penetration, which will help out quite a bit with your DPS. Certainly for solo content, things like the Maelstrom Arena, or even four-man content like VDSA or Dungeons, I would recommend running the Lover. 
but in trial situations you're going to get some nice penetration bonuses like major fracture from your tanks and you will get some other bonuses from other teammates as well so if you're in a 12-man trial depending on the situation you might want to switch over to the thief which is what will raise your weapon critical even higher but lover is pretty standard for most content uh, stage 2 vampire is recommended the main reason for this is because at stage 2 you have the ability to get a passive which will give you 10 percent stam recovery that helps get us to the massive stam recovery number I was talking about earlier. You can go higher with this, you can go to stage 3 or stage 4, but the increased fire damage and decreased health regen is honestly more of a problem than the other bonuses you get from being a higher stage, so I would say stage 2 is where you should keep it if you want to be optimal for this build. In terms of food, I recommend the purple drink called the Dubious Cameron Throne. It'll increase your stam recovery, your max stam, and your max health. Blue food can provide a little bit more health and a little bit more max stamina, but it's going to also hurt your sustain, so I would recommend just staying with the purple food. Uh, dubious is the way to go for pretty much all stam classes. And finally, for your potions, you are going to be running Essence of Weapon Power. This is going to grant Major Brutality, increasing your weapon damage, Major Savagery, giving you weapon critical, and restoring nearly 7600 stamina immediately. And this is just pretty much the best in slot potion to be using. You should be drinking them on cooldown to keep all these buffs up. And you're going to also need to drink them to restore your stamina and keep your sustain up as well. Okay, so now we're going to go over all the skills that we're going to be using and unlocking. First, I'm going to start with the active skills that we're going to actually put on our bars and use during our rotation in combat. And then I'll go over all the passives that we'll be unlocking separately afterwards. I'm going to try to give an explanation of each one as well, but I don't want this video to be like an hour long, so I'm going to try to keep them as brief as possible. So starting out here on our front bar, which is our main damage dealing bar, the first ability in slot 1 is Bull Netch. This is in the Animal Companion skill line for Wardens. It is the fourth skill you'll unlock. It starts as a skill called Betty Netch, so you want to throw that on your bar, level it up, and then morph it into Bull Netch. What this does is it casts a Netch Companion by your side, which will attach a Stamina Beam to you, and it will just passively restore Stamina over time. It costs nothing to cast, so you can spam it if you want, although there's really no reason to, um, and it will just passively restore Stamina, which will help with your Stam Recovery, and obviously it will help with your Sustain while killing enemies. Next up, we've got Cutting Dive, which is also in the Animal Companion skill line. This is the first skill you'll unlock, so you'll get this right away while leveling up a new character. And it starts as Dive, you want to morph it into Cutting Dive, and it just does a one-time direct damage to the enemy. It calls a bird down from the sky, it flies in and hits the target. No damage over time, nothing fancy, just a one-time damage. This is your main spammable for your front bar, so you're going to want to weave this with light attacks, get used to light attacking, and then just, you know, using the Cutting Dives in between. Great way to deal damage. Thirdly, we've got the Subterranean Assault. This is also from the Animal Companion skill line. This is the second ability in the skill line. It starts out as a skill called Scorch, and it morphs into Sub Assault. This will do two main things for you. Firstly, it'll deal poison damage to anything directly in front of you, and then it will also provide Major Fracture to anything that gets hit by that poison damage, and Major Fracture reduces the enemy's physical resistance, which is basically the same thing as increasing your physical penetration which is a fancy way of saying that things will take more damage from your other abilities. So you press the button, you'll punch the ground, exactly three seconds later, shulks will come up out of the ground and hit anything directly in front of you, and it deals a lot of poison damage and simultaneously applies Fracture, which will increase the damage of your other abilities for five seconds after the initial hit. Fourth up, we've got Lightweight Beast Trap. The initial trap beast comes from the Fighter's Guild skill line, so you'll want to actually get the Fighter's Guild unlocked as early as you can on a new character. Go to one of the major cities and talk to the Fighter's Guild people to unlock the skill line. Anytime that you kill undead, daedra, or werewolves, you will start gaining Fighter's Guild rep. And when you get up to level 8, you'll unlock Trap Beast. You want to level that up and morph it into Lightweight Beast Trap. Um, basically all this does is throws a trap at the enemy. It won't cast immediately. When you click the button, it'll create an AOE circle. You use your mouse to decide where you want to drop it and then click to throw it. It will immobilize the enemy if the enemy can be immobilized. It will deal damage on impact and then it will continue dealing additional damage over six seconds. It will also give you a minor force for those six seconds, which will increase your crit damage by 10%. So it will basically make your critical hits from other skills deal more damage while that trap is down for 6 seconds. So it's a great skill to have, increases your crit. Um, you also will make use of the other morph of this, which is called Rearming Trap. 
The thing is, rearming trap requires you to be right up in the face of the enemy because you can't throw it from a distance. It'll just drop it directly in front of you. So for the range version of this build, you want to use lightweight because you can stay at a distance and throw the trap. Uh, but I'll go over that a little bit more when showing the melee build later. Fifth and finally, we have got Vigor. Vigor comes from the Alliance War, so you're going to have to do some PvP to unlock this one. In the Assault skill line, it is the second skill you unlock. Do some Battlegrounds or go into Cyrodiil and do some Zerging. It probably won't take more than a couple Battlegrounds or a half hour of Zerging to get to level 4 when you'll unlock Vigor. You want to morph it into Resolving Vigor, which increases the amount that it heals the caster which basically just means more self-healing for you. And all it does is it gives you heals over time for five seconds. Press the button, you will cast Vigor, and then you will get a big burst heal initially, and then additional heals over the next five seconds. Any allies that are inside of that AoE circle will also gain heals for five seconds. So it's great in raids when you're stacked on top of the boss and everyone's right on top of one another. You pop a Vigor and it will heal everybody inside of the AoE for five seconds helps uh, alleviate your pain and also helps alleviate the pain of the healers who are trying to heal the entire group as well. For our ultimate, we want to use the bear ultimate, which is in the animal companion skill line for wardens. It's called feral guardian at first and you want to morph it into wild guardian. What this does is you press the button to cast it and you will summon a bear familiar. It won't actually consume the ultimate points right away, it will just summon the bear, and he will actually stay up even when your ultimate isn't available to be cast. Anytime you attack an enemy, the bear will also attack the enemy. I have him set to passive right now, which is why he's not doing so. But when you go ahead and you press the ultimate, whenever your ultimate bar is full, it will make the bear go up, go on his hind legs, and swipe down. You can see there a 23.9k crit, so he just deals massive damage. There's another 22.3k. He just does insane damage. Uh, and then it'll continue attacking after you are done with the ultimate and you just continue attacking to rebuild your ultimate points back up. Uh, he can also kind of take the, the tanking job for you. He can aggro enemies and alleviate you having to tank everything. It's great in VMA. Uh, but yeah, he's just there to deal passive damage and then anytime your ultimate is actually available to be popped, I think it costs 75 ultimate points for the bear. Every time you get your ultimate up, you just go ahead and press it and he'll do an extra massive hit. So right now he's dealing like two to five K per hit. When you get your ultimate charged, you press the button and you watch the massive hits come in. There is um, a huge, huge damage boost. And the morph, the wild guardian morph will actually give you double damage when the boss or enemy is under 25% health. So this is effectively your execute um, because you don't have an execute skill. But when the enemy that the bear is attacking is under 25%, he will deal double damage. So that 23.9k I hit earlier would actually be a 48k. It deals disgusting damage. Um, moving on now to the back bar. Um, this is going to be basically your dot bar. You start out with Bird of Prey. This is also, believe it or not, in the Animal Companion skill line. It is the fifth and final skill you'll unlock. It is just a buff skill. What it does is it gives you Major Endurance, Minor Berserk, and Major Expedition which will increase your stam recovery by 20%, your movement speed by 30%, and your damage done by 8%. It lasts for 10 seconds, and your rotation's gonna take about 10 seconds, so you should have a pretty high uptime with this. Press the button, gives you wings for a second, and as you can see, now I'm running faster, and I also have better stam recovery and 8% increased damage. Uh, great to have on your, your back bar, and you cast it every rotation. Secondly, we've got Caltrops. Again, this comes from the Assault Alliance War skill line. You'll need to get Assault up to level 6. So after you get bigger, just keep doing a couple more Battlegrounds or go into Cyrodiil and kill some people to unlock Caltrops. Basically, um, Caltrops gets morphed into Razor Caltrops and you just throw a giant ball of Caltrops. This one's like the Beast Trap where it doesn't cast immediately. It creates a giant AoE circle. You click where you want to cast it and then you throw the Caltrops down. Razor Caltrops gives you a bigger hit on the initial throw, so you'll get more physical damage immediately. It will continue to deal damage over time, and it will slow the enemy down by 70% for 3 seconds. I believe Caltrops by itself uh, reduces movement speed by 30% 30 30 but Razor Caltrops will reduce it by 70% for 3 seconds. So it's great for slowing enemies down, and it's just a, a good passive dot to have on your bar. Next up, we move to the bow skill line, and we've got Poison Injection as our third ability on the back bar. Poison Injection starts out as Poison Arrow and will be morphed into Poison Injection. It is the fifth and final skill, so you've got to get your bow up to level 42 to unlock this one. And what this does is it deals a poison damage dot. You just click it, 
it applies a huge initial hit to the enemy and then continues dealing poison damage over time. It lasts for 10 seconds, so you just cast it once every 10 seconds, and you can see that green circle around the enemy means that it is currently being afflicted by the poison dot of poison injection. Super straightforward one there. Next up, we've got Endless Hail, which is also in the bow skill line. This will be unlocked a lot earlier while leveling up. Uh, it's the second skill in the skill line. It starts out as a skill called Volley, and you want to morph it into Endless Hail. Basically, this makes it rain arrows for 10 seconds. It will deal damage over time. Uh, it's another one that is ground cast, so you have to press the button and then select where you want it to be cast. And then every 0.5 seconds for 10 seconds, you will deal damage with arrows falling from the sky. So it gets 20 total ticks every half second for 10 seconds. Just a huge dot. This is probably the highest damage source that you're going to have. You want this to be up 100% of the time. Uh, great skill to have and then finally we've got cutting dive again This is a flex slot So we're not actually going to cast this on this bar if you remember cutting dive is the bird ability that we have as the uh, Main spammable on our front bar you have it on the back bar as well But we're not actually going to cast it It is purely there for a passive which will increase our damage just for having it on the bar Which I'll explain in a minute, but you don't actually cast it on the back bar It is just there for a passive Again, you need the bear on both bars. The reason for that is because if you take the bear off of one bar, it will be desummoned anytime you switch to a bar that it's not on. So if you summon the bear on your front bar, and then you start attacking stuff with it, and then you swap to your back bar, the bear dies. So you need to have the bear double barred. It's way too big of a DPS loss to keep recasting it all the time. And you want it to be attacking when you're doing abilities on both bars anyway. So just cast it once. And then forget that it's there because he will just deal damage uh, on both bars over time. Now we're going to go over your passive abilities and show the ones you want to unlock and not. I'm not going to go into a full explanation on all of these. I'm just going to pretty much tell you what you want and don't want. And then uh, the ones that are important, I'll kind of explain why. But here in the animal companion skill line, you want everything. The main one being advanced species. If you remember a second ago, I said that this ability is on your bar as a flex slot, meaning it's just there for the passive. Well, this passive will increase your damage done by 2% for each animal companion ability slotted. So even though you're not using this, you're still getting 2% damage increase to everything you do just by having it on the bar. That's why you have that there, and the rest of these provide similar buffs. In the green balance skill line, you also want everything. They are going to give you heals. I actually don't have this leveled up to 50 yet, so I don't have the final maturation point. That's what this skill point is for. But yeah, everything in the green balance skill line as well. For Winter's Embrace, I don't even level it up. I don't think it's worth it. Some people recommend Icy Aura, which reduces effectiveness of snares applied to you. This would be great in PvP, not really that useful in PvE. I would just ignore it if I were you. For bow, you want absolutely everything. You want all of the passives here. Long shots will increase your damage by 12%. The farther away you are, the more effective it is, up to 12%. So this one is huge. That's why we use lightweight beast trap and stay far away from the enemy instead of being right up in its face. That 12% damage bonus is actually pretty viable, so it's great to stay at range. Uh, although you do have alternative options if you want to stay up close, you just won't get the benefit of this passive. Get everything. It's useful. Make sure you have it. Uh, we're using medium armor sets. We do have one light and one heavy piece, but majority of it is medium, so you want every passive for medium armor. In the heavy armor passives, you do want Juggernaut. Uh, it will increase your max health by 2% just by having the heavy piece that we're wearing. I would recommend Constitution and Resolve for their passives as well. These two are only useful if you have five or more pieces of heavy armor, which we don't. So definitely get Juggernaut. These two are up to you. And Light Armor, same thing. I recommend Spell Warding because it gives you increased spell resistance. You can get some of these as well, but not really necessary for our build. Just go with Spell Warding. That's pretty much all you need. Now, moving on to Fighter's Guild, you want everything except Bounty Hunter, because this just applies to Cyrodiil, which this is a PvE build. Uh, but you do want to get Banished the Wicked, which will generate 9 ultimate every time you kill Undead, Daedra, or Werewolf. You're getting 75 ultimate, per, 75 ultimate points per cast of your Feral Bear ultimate, so you definitely get a ton when you're doing dungeons. You can cast an ultimate like every 5 seconds. It's absurd how, how often you can ult with this. Uh, Slayer increases your weapon damage by 3% for every fighter's guild ability slotted. This only applies to your front bar because you have lightweight beast trap, but you will get an additional 3% weapon damage from that. Um, and then in the Undaunted skill line, you're going to want both of the passives here. They are crucial to increasing your max resources, and it's a big part of your health comes from this as well. Um, so definitely get both of your Undaunteds. And then in your Racials, you want absolutely everything. 
You want all of your racials. They give you huge stamina recovery, which we were talking about earlier. Increase to max stamina. Uh, and you'll actually level up faster in the bow skill line when you have your wood elf passives active. So definitely get these as early as you can. And then in crafting for alchemy, I recommend medicinal use. This will make it so that your potions last 30% longer. Um, and this will actually make it so that your potion effectiveness lasts longer than the cooldown of your potions. So as long as you're using a potion every time you're able to, you will have 100% uptime with your potion buffs. And as we said before, you get some pretty viable buffs from your potions. So yeah, those are your passives. Those are all of the ones that you're going to want to make use of. Now, onto the recommended gear. Pretty much par for the course with all stamina classes is five piece Reliquin on the body and it's no different here. You're going to want Reliquin's jack, guards, gloves, boots, and belt. These drop from the Cloud Rest trial in Somerset. It is by far the strongest stamina set at the moment, so I strongly recommend you get all five pieces. You want the Divine's trait on all five and you want a stamina enchantment on all five. So Reliquin's five piece all stam enchants, all divines. Pretty easy to remember. What this set does, every time you light or heavy attack, it applies a harmful wind, that little tornado, to the enemy. And the stacks will increase with every light attack up to 20, which basically just makes the winds deal more damage. At maximum of 20 stacks, this will be dealing about 7k DPS with this build. So any other set that you use instead of Reliquin, you are flat out losing about 7k damage per second. It is massive. Definitely want to get Reliquins. The stacks don't reset or disappear unless you go more than five seconds without light attacking and you'll be light attacking literally every skill. You'll skill light attack, skill light attack, so it should never be more than five seconds. The wind should never fall off and once you get up to 20 stacks, it's massive damage. So get all five medium reliquins, divines with stam and chance on the body. Your other five piece set is gonna be War Machine. War Machine drops from the Halls of Fabrication trial. This is a great set because every time you use an ultimate ability, it will increase your damage by 15% for 10 seconds. That is a huge damage increase. And your ultimate only costs 75 ultimate points with the bear. You're gaining ultimate very quickly, especially if you have the und Undaunted passives and the Fighter's Guild passives. So every time you click that button to make the bear ult, you gain an additional 15% damage for 10 seconds. You'll be ulting every like 15 to 20 seconds, so you'll have 50 to 75% uptime on a massive damage increase. And it also affects two nearby allies, so every time you cast it, the two people closest to you will also get that buff. It is really great in trial situations, and it's also extremely strong just for yourself, so definitely get your hands on War Machine. Uh, you can farm it on normal, you'll get lower quality jewelry, but you can just upgrade the jewelry on your own if you want. You don't have to go past purple on anything other than the weapons. I strongly recommend gold weapons. Purple is fine for armor and for jewels. And yeah, it's pretty easy to farm, pretty straightforward. Get yourself some more machine if you can. Back bar, I would recommend getting a Maelstrom Bow. The Maelstrom Bow drops from the Veteran Maelstrom Arena. If you can't complete it or just haven't gotten lucky enough to get a bow drop from the final boss yet, then just go ahead and double bar War Machine. Use a second War Machine Bow back bar. But once you get the Maelstrom Bow, you definitely want to use this back bar because it increases your endless hail damage by a lot, which will increase your DPS by a lot. So definitely get your hands on a Maelstrom Bow as soon as possible and chuck that on the back bar. But just bubble bar whatever set you're using. If you're not using War Machine, whatever you're using here, just throw it on the back bar until you get the Maelstrom Bow. In terms of enchants, I recommend a uh, Befouled Weapon or Disease Enchant on the front bar and a Poison Damage on the back bar, and both of them are infused. Infused will increase the effectiveness of the enchant and reduce the cooldown, meaning it can proc more often. Weapon damage enchant is great just for overall use case, but the single target DPS is slightly higher with the befouled enchant, at least as far as I've found. So for parses, definitely go ahead and throw the disease enchant on there. Both infused, robust on the jewels. Uh, and then for your monster set, you want light storm fist shoulders and heavy storm fist helm. You want divines again, so you have all seven divines on the body. And you want a stam enchant on the shoulder and a health enchant on the, the helm. You can use a stam enchant on the helm as well if you're comfortable with having like 15 and a half K health. But you get an extra thousand health. It makes you much more comfortable if you throw a health enchant on the helmet instead. So I would recommend going with a health enchant on the helmet instead of stam. But all seven divines on the body, three robust on the jewels, two infused on the weapons. And that's it. Uh, if you don't have these sets, there are plenty of other stamina sets you can use. I would recommend Two Fang Snake for solo content because it gives you extra penetration. If you don't have War Machine or Two Fang Snake, you can also use sets like Vicious Ophidian, 
Briarheart, or Advancing Yokata. And if you are a beginner or you just want to have some crafted sets to level with, I would recommend Nightmother's Gaze or Hunding's Rage as your two beginner crafted sets for stamina builds. So now we're going to go over your rotation and we're going to show you exactly what order you should cast skills in to get the most damage out of this build. Whenever you're going to enter combat, make sure first that you've got your food up, so go ahead and drink your Dubious. Then um, anytime you're going to enter combat, you want to self buff first, so you want to use your two self buffs, which are your Bird of Prey and then your Netch, and then you're ready to actually go into combat. And your opener will be Shulks, and if you have it, you're going to want to also cast your Bear Ult. So you're going to sub assault and then walk up to the enemy and the shocks will hit them right as you're entering combat and use your ultimate if it's up. So again, once your food is up, you're going to want a bird of prey, then you're going to want a netch and then shocks, ultimate, and then go in for your rotation. That's your opener. Once you're in combat, you're going to start on your back bar and you're going to drop all your dots. So you start with endless hail and you light attack after every skill. So Endless Hail, then Light Attack, then Poison Inject, then Light Attack, then Caltrops, then Light Attack, then Bird of Prey, then Light Attack, and then Swap. So basically, if you set up your bar the way that I showed you in the previous segment, then it's just 4, Light Attack, 3, Light Attack, 2, Light Attack, 1, Light Attack, Swap. Then once you're on the front bar, you're going to go ahead, use your Shulks again. So Sub Assault, Light Attack, Cutting Dive light attack trap light attack and then just repeat but the second time replace your trap with a second cutting dive so the second time through it's shocks light attack dive light attack dive light attack swap now i'll show you the whole thing at kind of like half speed and then after that i'll go into a full-on parse and show you how quickly you can kill a six mil dummy uh, and deal about 45k damage when you put it all together but starting on your front bar we're gonna, um, we're gonna, I guess we can probably do one full rotation on this thing before it dies. So again, we're gonna just show the whole thing here. So use your Bird of Prey, use your Netch, Shulks, Ult, swap to your front bar. We go Endless Hail, Light, Poison Inject, Light, Caltrops, Light, Bird, Swap. Then we go Shulks, Light, Cutting Dive, Light, Trap, Light, Shulks, Light, Cutting dive, light, cutting dive, light, swap. So that is what the rotation looks like. I'll do it one more time for you. We got hail, poison inject, cow shrops, bird of prey. Then we've got cutting, or sorry, we've got assault, cutting dive, trap, assault, cutting dive, cutting dive, swap. And then you just start it all over again and you just keep repeating that rotation. Uh, if you notice that you're dipping kind of low on stamina, you want to go ahead and replace one of your cutting dives with a netch so that you can be good on recovery. But that is pretty much how the entire rotation goes. You just rinse and repeat that until the enemy that you're fighting is dead. Make sure you're drinking a potion every time that you're able to on cooldown. And um, yeah, now I will show you a full speed parse and that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this build. Let me know if you're going to try it out. And if you do, come back and let me know what you think of the results if you enjoy it. It is my favorite play style in the game and is currently my favorite build in ESO. And I really hope that you guys learned something and maybe want to try this out for yourselves. Again, make sure you subscribe for future content. Hope you enjoyed and enjoy the parse.